go over to the, um, the schema now, and let's look at how these sections work. So here's a section, has an ID, has a date updated, has a title, has a body. The body is multiple paragraphs. And now here's kind of the punchline, how you deal with um, how you deal with uh, how you deal with this mixed element. And we're going to throw one more complication in in a moment, but let's start with how you deal with the p tag. So we see here that the p tag seems to have an unbounded choice. This guy here is a choice, not a sequence, of b's, i's, keywords, and index anchors. That means I can have as many and in whatever order of B, I, keyword, and index anchor I want. If that was all that was going on, then we'd have a P and its children would be some combination of B's, I's, keywords, and index anchors. But we know as well that those B, B's, I's, keyword, and index anchors are mixed in with text nodes. And so there's something else we have to do. In fact, the something else we have to do, get rid of that box, the something else we have to do is to set the mixed attribute here to true. If this mixed attribute isn't set to true, then the p tag will not be able or not be allowed to have text node children mixed in with the b's, the i's, the keywords, and the index anchors. By setting mixed equals true, what I've said is that p, the children of that p tag can be a mixture, a mixture between any number of text nodes and the child attribute or the child elements and child attributes that I've also assigned to the p. And I haven't assigned any child attributes, but I certainly could. And so now we have the full modeling of, of a mixed p tag. The p tag is called mix, which means it can have text nodes. It has these children, and these children are a combination, um, interestingly, between tags that look like HTML tags and tags that are not HTML tags. So our inline model, and that's what I'm going to start calling this, because it's the, all the tags that go in line with the p. And by the way, if we had an li, for example, a list items, we'd probably have all the same elements that go in line with that. So our inline elements are all allowed to be mixed in with text nodes inside the P, which is exactly the behavior that we'd like so that we can splice in um, bits and pieces of text with child elements. One more thing to talk about here, and that's why is there a blue box around all these elements? Notice in other cases, it's not a blue box. The blue box means that I've defined these elements Go away, you boxes. What is going on here? Go away. I don't know why it keeps doing that to me. Okay. The blue box um, indicates that this is a group. All of these elements work as a group. And I've defined them down here. And if I wanted to have a new one, I would, I would click on the scheme and I'd say new global element group. See that guy right there that's an element group? You can also create an attribute group, but in this case, we're talking about an element group. That allows me, and it really doesn't have anything to do with mixed thing, by the way. That's a whole different issue. This this is a new issue, and this is the issue of how do I group together a set of elements so that I can reuse them. We already know that you can reuse things by making them global. Like, for example, the title is reusable because it's global. Now I have a new kind of global. I have a global group of elements, not just a single element, but a whole group of elements that I can apply over and over again. So down here in my list of global things, you can see that that's where the model is defined. So here's the choice. And here's the um, and here's the um, all the elements in that choice. One other thing of note here is that notice that the um, the uh, the optional and bounded is not applied to the to the in the case of groups is not applied to the um, choice or the sequence. If it was a sequence, it's applied to the group itself. So this group itself is optional and bounded. And this here. Um, is, is notice you can't even assign optionals and unbounded to that. You, uh, you assign the optional and bounded to the entire group. Okay, so what we've talked about here is how to create mixed elements. The mixed elements have a combination of text nodes and child um, elements and attributes. And then we talked about how to create a group. The combination of those two create our inline model. This inline model can be applied to any element that we want to have that behavior allowed to have any of these elements. And then we would also, um, if we had a new element here, let me just create one just to show you how it works. I put the child element. Let's say, actually, we want it in here. Because now let's say that our body can not only is not only allowed to have paragraphs, but it's also allowed to have, um, let's call them, uh, oh, I don't know, blocks. OK, and those blocks, I'm going to append a child. And I'm going to say append element group. 
and now I choose the inline group. Now I make that inline group optional and unbounded. Final thing I do is I take blocks and I make the, um, notice how I have to open that up to get to the mixed, I make that true. And now I have another element that works the same way as the P element did. So it's very convenient. I can easily make all sorts of ones that have the block, or excuse me, that have the inline model. Okay.